Hello and welcome to Taxes in 10, where we take a tax topic and break it down in about 10 minutes. My name is Mark Barnes, and I'm the managing partner of Copper Canyon Tax and Accounting Services in Tucson, Arizona. We are a boutique firm that specializes in small business accounting and taxes. This episode is on installment sales. An installment sale is a sale that allows the selling taxpayer to defer a portion of their capital gain into future years. A sale is structured and the buyer makes regular payments to the seller. The seller collects principal and interest with each payment as well as recognizing a portion of the capital gain. This is often referred to as carrying the loan. The benefits of an installment sale reduce the taxes paid in a single year and possibly avoid qualified business income phase-out limits, net investment income tax, and higher premiums on Medicare Part B for people over 65. You can collect additional income from interest paid on the loan. In today's low interest rate environment, getting 4.5% or 5% return on your investment isn't a terrible thing. And potentially avoid capital gains tax altogether if your income is low and capital gains remain in the 0% bracket. Installment sales are common in real estate and can be utilized by individual sellers and buyers. IRS Topic 705 states that an installment sale is when you will receive at least one payment after the tax year in which the sale occurs. You are required to report gain on an installment sale under the installment method unless you choose not to before the filing date of the tax return which the sale would be reported on. You can find a full list of tax topics at irs.gov slash tax topics. Your total gain on an installment sale is generally the amount by which the selling price of the property you sold exceeds your adjusted basis in that property. The selling price includes the money and the fair market value of property received, any of selling expenses that are paid by the buyer, and existing debt that the buyer pays or assumes. Installment sale method does not apply to the sale that results in a loss. Drawbacks of an installment sale Depreciation above straight line will be recaptured in the year of sale. This typically applies to 1245 property and default by the buyer. Let's look at scenario number one. Taxpayer purchases a house for $100,000 and immediately converts it to business property. It remains a rental for the next 15 years. When it is sold on an installment sale, for $220,000. There are $20,000 in sales expenses. At closing, a $10,000 down payment is made. The sale occurs on December 28 and payments will begin on January 28 of the following year. During the time it was used as business property, it had $50,000 of depreciation allowed or allowable. $50,000 was taken as straight line depreciation and will be treated as income until all recaptured 1250 gain is recognized, then 1231 gain will be recognized. Calculate our adjusted basis, $100,000 purchase price plus $20,000 in sales costs minus $50,000 depreciation equals an adjusted basis of $70,000. Subtract our adjusted basis from our sales price, $220,000 minus $70,000 equals a gain of $150,000. Then we divide our gross profit of $150,000 by our contract price of $220,000 to arrive at our gross profit percentage, $150,000 divided by $220,000 equals 68.18 percent. Each payment going forward will be split as follows. Interest income on the loan. This amount will be reported on line 2b 
of Form 1040 and retain its character as interest income. Principal portion of the payment will be split based on our gross profit percentage with 68.18% recognized as 1250 gain until it is all realized. Then the remainder will be 1231. The excess of the payment is a return of capital. Installment sales are reported on Form 6252, which is shown here. Let's talk about year one. Part one, gross profit and contract price. Our sales price is shown on line five. Our original purchase price is shown on line eight. Depreciation allowed or allowable is shown on line nine. Our adjusted basis is shown on line 13. Our gross profit is shown on line 16. Part two, installment sale income. Line 19 is where we calculate our gross profit percentage. Line 21 is where we report payments that represent principal and capital gain. Remember our $10,000 down payment. Line 22, total payments received times line 19 gross profit percentage equals $6,818 being the taxable gain on the $10,000 down payment that was made. Now let's talk about year two and all future years. The seller must maintain a loan amortization schedule. This will help them track interest and principal and will also help the buyer know what is deductible as mortgage interest. From the buyer's perspective, mortgage interest will go on line 8B of the Schedule A, not on line 8A. After the first year, the seller has received $10,430 of interest income on the loan. This is entered as part of the data entry on Form 6252, but will flow to line 2B of Form 1040 also known as the postcard. In addition, they have received $3,098 of payments towards principal and capital gain. This amount will be entered on Form 6252, Line 21, and will be multiplied by our gross profit percentage. This results in a 1250 gain of $2,112 for the year. The seller will recognize $10,430 of interest income and $2,112 in 1250 gain taxed at a maximum rate of 25%. Your software should produce a 1250 worksheet. Line 23 is the total of all principal payments collected prior to the current year. You will want to track this two ways first in the software, and second in Excel. This worksheet is your verification that all 1250 has been tracked and will be your evidence in the event of an audit. Remember, this income will be reported for several years and you or your client will need to retain this information. Don't be afraid to charge for this service. This is what our spreadsheet looks like. Let's play pretend for a minute. In 2019, 20, 21, and 22, you can see that we recognize 1250 gain. Assuming that all 1250 gain was completed in 2022, in 2023, you would then move the gain to 1231 gain until the contract was completed. What is not eligible? The following gains must be reported in the year in which the sale occurs. Sale of inventory of personal property. Sales of personal property by a dealer unless the property is used or produced in farming. Sales of timeshares and residential lots by dealers unless the buyer elects to pay a special interest charge and sales of stock or securities traded on an established securities market. 
Make sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date on all of our Taxes in 10 video series and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash potential CPE. If you are interested in earning continuing education on this topic, please visit potentialcpe.com for a list of all the courses we provide. Our one, two, and four hour on-demand webinars will focus approximately 75% of each hour educating theory and regulation and 25% of each hour on procedure with real life examples to walk you through completing the necessary forms to increase your potential.